Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Magnificent Math with Mrs. Murray. Bum, ba, da, bum. <clears throat> Tonight, we're going to be going over 7.3, which is absolute value equations. And to solve an absolute value equation, we need to think back to the definition of absolute value. If we think back to that, we're going to realize that there's going to be two cases for each expression. So, in the first case, the expression inside the absolute value symbol is going to be positive, or it's going to be zero. In the second case, the expression inside the absolute value symbol is negative. We're going to have to consider both of these cases when we solve an equation. For example, if we have the absolute value of x minus 3 equal to 7, we're going to just take the equation as given within that absolute value notation as x minus 3 equals 7, and we're going to solve algebraically to find out that x equals 10. But we also have to consider the negative value that could happen. So we're going to take the negative of x minus 3 equal to 7. When we distribute the negative through and solve algebraically, we end up at x equal to negative 4. So for this expression, <clears throat> we can have x equal to 10 as an answer or x equal to negative 4. If you substitute this in, you would get 10 minus 3, and that does in fact equal 7. If you substitute this, you would have negative 4 minus 3, which equals negative 7, Taking the absolute value of that does give us positive 7. Okay, so in this second example, we've got a word problem. So the computerized uh, process, um, sorry, computerized process controls the amount of batter used to process uh, cookies in a factory. The computer program sets the ideal mass before baking at 55 grams, but allows for a tolerance of plus or minus 2.5 grams. Solve an absolute value equation for the maximum and minimum mass of batter for cookies at this factory. So the way we set this up, up this equation is we put this on the right side of the equation and then we have our mass minus our 55 on the left side. We're going to take the absolute value of that. Okay, so of course we consider the positive value and when we solve for that we get m equal to 57.2. Now we need to ask ourselves what would make this negative. So we're going to take the negative of that inside portion and when we simplify this should be 2.5 we end up with m equal to 53.5 so the maximum mass that is acceptable is 57.5 the minimum that's acceptable is 53.5 in this example we have a situation where we're going to have an extraneous solution so we solve this in the same way that we would solve any other equation. So we take the original equation and solve to find that x equals, sorry, the 2. Okay, and then we have to consider negative 2x minus 5. So when we set negative in front of that and simplify, we end up with x equal to 0. When we check both of these, if we check x equal to 2 in this original equation, we find out that 8 minus 5 is what will our, our absolute value will equal. So we, that's 3, and the right side of the equation will be equal to 5 minus 6. 3 does not equal negative 1, so this does not work. We cannot use this. Okay? On the right, or in our other situation, if we substitute 0 into the original equation, we find out that it does in fact work, so this here is our answer. Looking at this example, we have a pretty uh, unique situation. So what we do first is we're going to move this 12 over to the other side, and what's going to happen is that that's going to become negative 3. Now, as soon as we have a negative on the right side of the equation with an absolute value expression on the left side, we need to stop and ask ourselves, can the absolute value of anything ever be negative? Hopefully you know that the answer is no. And so therefore, there is no solution. There's nothing that we can put in here that will ever give us a value of negative 3 as an answer. Okay? So another example, this time it's just involving a quadratic expression. So what we have to do here is we're going to move this negative 1 over to this side to create a trinomial that we can factor. So that ends up being x squared minus 2x minus 1 equal to 0. 
And from there, you can't actually factor it nicely, so you have to use the quadratic formula. So you substitute your b in here and here, then you have minus 4a and c over 2a. When you simplify that, you get 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. And if you substitute this back into the original equation, you do find that they do check. Okay, I didn't show you that, but you should always check just to make sure. And then we have to consider the negative part of the equation. So we have, skipped ahead here, negative multiplied by x squared minus 2x minus 1. Keep in mind this negative only applies to what's in the brackets here. So we're going to distribute that through to get negative x and then plus 2x. And then we have the minus 1 on the outside. What we're going to do now is factor out this negative. And when we factor out the negative, we're left with x squared. Then this becomes minus 2x. This becomes plus 1. Now we need to factor that. So we're going to factor this trinomial. And we ask ourselves what two numbers multiply to 1, add to negative 2. And that's negative 1 and 1. So our answer then is x equal to 1. That also checks if you substitute it in here, okay? And the last question, this one, we have a linear expression on this side and a quadratic on this side. So we're going to go through that same process. So we have x minus 10 equal to x squared minus 10x. Move everything over to the right side, and we have x squared minus 11x plus 10. Now we need two numbers that multiply to 10, add to negative 11. Hopefully you see that x minus 1 and x minus 10 are the solutions. So therefore that means that x equals 1 and x equals 10. Taking into consideration the negative expression, when we expand and move everything over to the right side, this is what we end up with. Factor that and you end up with x minus 10, x plus 1, which gives you x equals 10 and x equals 1. Now, if we want to find out an easy way to say which values um, are actually possible solutions, we can look at our piecewise function for the absolute portion of this expression. So if we just take x minus 10, and if you visualize how x minus 10 would look on a graph, okay, and then the negative or the absolute function, how that would look when we flip it, you would find that x is greater than 10, when x is greater than 10, it will be displaying this original equation. When x is less than 10, it would be displaying this part of the equation. Okay? So, if we look at our um, cases here, so for the positive portion, when x is greater than 10 or equal to 10, we can see here that x equal to 1 does not satisfy this part of the piecewise notation, okay? So that is actually not a possible solution. x equal to 10 does satisfy this part of the equation, so that one is a possible solution. Looking over at the negative situation, we have x equal to 10 and x equal to negative 1. Notice that x equal to 10 does not satisfy x being less than or equal to 10. So it doesn't work for that particular case, okay? But this one does work for that particular case. That being said, because x equal to 10 works for this, we do have to include it. So our solutions would be x equal to 10 and x equal to negative 1. If you wanted to check on a graph how that would look, if we go to our graph here, and if I zoom out a bit, so this is our linear portion here and our quadratic portion here. If we look at the point, we had x equal to 1. If we go up to x equal to 1, it appears on the linear portion of the equation, and it appears on the quadratic portion, but they don't overlap. They're not equal to one another. Therefore, x equal to 1 is not a possible solution. Okay, um, going back, we had x equal to negative 1. If we look here at x equal to negative 1, we can see that the graph does intersect at negative 1. 
for x and 11 for y. Okay, so that's a possible value. And the other point where the two graphs intersect are where x equals to 10 and y equals to 0. So you can see that these two values for x are possible, but when x equals 1, there's no point where the graphs intersect, so that is not a possible solution. Okay, um, so just remember for this point, we want, for this section, we want to always look at the positive expression and then the negative expression and solve and go from there. It's important to check your answers to see which ones uh, work and which ones don't. You can do that by substituting the equations into a graphing uh, calculator like this and checking to see what works. Or you can use your piecewise notation and then see which values uh, work for that particular situation. Okay, so I'll post the 7.3 assignment as well and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, Mom.